Hi, my name is Paul Ricard, and I'd like to welcome you to the wonderful world of watercolors. Let me extend a personal invitation to get your brushes and paints and paint along with me. We'll use about, oh, 12 colors and an assortment of brushes. I'd like to tell everyone that everyone can paint. I started painting when I was 59, and I haven't come up for, for air. I can't wait to share with you the painting that we're going to be doing now. This is a, a photo that I took of Luffenholz Beach. Those of you that live in Humboldt County will, will know that this is a beach that, that's iconic. It's a really beautiful location. Uh, when I first get out to the scene, I always think about what is it that, that I want to share with my art with the painting, and, and here you can see the beautiful cloud formations that, that are at the top, and clouds have a, a beautiful perspective about them too. But also just the movement of the water and the, and the darks and lights in, in the painting. Uh, it's just full of opportunity for a plein air painter. So, so I'm gonna start right now with what's called a wash, and I'm gonna dip my brush into the water, and I'm going to get some very rich verditer blue. And I'm going to just sop it and get it full of pigment. And then I'm going to ready a little tissue because I'll be making clouds as I paint. And so here we go. And I'm just really loose about how I'm painting. And when I paint outside, I'm doing that too. And, and you can see the brush is. It's, it's quite large, and it holds a lot of water and a lot of paint. So I'm going to come down here, and I'll be getting some kind of cleaner water from a different location. And look at that nice, soupy mix. All right, here comes the cloud, and I'm looking at my photo, and they're kind of up there. There we go. I'm putting a little bit of paint there to give it a little definition. And then I, I think I'll put a little more pigment in there, we call it. And the pigment will go like that, and then I'll come down here a little bit more. There we go. I'd like to get a little more light in that cloud than we've got. The thing about watercolor painting is that, that when you paint, it has to kind of move together. You don't want to be painting things in isolation of each other. So I'm going to run that, that, uh, that blue sky right down into the painting. And I'm going to be looking for where the sh shadows might fall. And I'll be putting some of those shadows in early on in the painting so that, as I say, the the painting is sculpted with the idea that, that we just kind of build it up as we go along. So the sky has just come right down in. The other thing that I have to think about too when I do watercolor uh, painting is that the light is the paper itself, the white of the paper. So I'm gonna look at the, at the photo here. I'd be looking out on, on the landscape if I was there, of course. And I'll be thinking about where the lights will, will need to fall in the painting. It's kind of a gray day with, with the scene, so it's okay to get some of these shadows in here, and I'll be moving my brush around, taking a little bit of, of tissue and, and time to, to bring the lights back into the painting. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. You know, um, now I'm going to think about some of the other colors that I might want to put in. For example, this looks to me like it might need a little bit of, 
oh, lighter color and some green. And I'm going to use some raw sienna. Raw sienna is a beautiful warm tone. can go right there. I can put it right there. If, if you put paint somewhere in the painting, you want to be able to move it to somewhere else. And there it is right there. And this part right here, I see that there's light right there. So I, I want to protect that for later on and make sure that the light comes through. Now I'm going to put a, a little bit of dark in the painting and I'll be using burnt umber and a little cobalt blue, which makes a beautiful color of gray. I've often heard people say that if you want a colorful painting, that you should use a lot of gray. And I'm, I'm a proponent of that. I, I like really earthy and warm tones in a painting. So let's start putting in just the hint of dark. This, by the way, this first part of the painting is called an underpainting. And uh, the underpainting sets the tone for the whole painting. If, if I get a good underpainting, and I may or may not, it'll set the tone for the painting, and it often makes, makes or breaks the painting right, right from the beginning. So we're, we'll go ahead. And this quill brush, uh, see, you can see it's a really large brush. If you can get used to using large brushes at the start, I think you'll have better luck with, with painting because it keeps you loose and it, and it keeps the, the, the painting flowing. So here I'm just going what's called wet into wet. Wet into wet is when you, you paint pigment right into the, the wet painting and it, and it merges together as you can see. So I'm just looking, uh, now for, the, for what colors might, might I add to that. So I'm gonna take a little hooker green in my painting, in my brush, and I'm gonna think about where I might add a little bit here and there. <laughs> you can get mesmerized with watercolors. When I said at the beginning the wonder of watercolors, uh, I wasn't lying because it's just beautiful. The way they merge, the way they flow, ah, oh, it's beautiful. I'm just going up here a little bit. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, lots, lots of accidents happen with, with watercolors, and uh, so I'm hoping that, that I'll get those kinds of, of accidents that'll be really interesting when all is said and done. I'll put a little yellow ochre in here. Yellow ochre is the, is the color of autumn those beautiful yellow tones that we get. And let's see, maybe I can come down here a little bit too. Lots of pigment on my brush and to, make it, to keep it full of life. But what really gives life to the painting, other than the artist, is water. Water has breathed life into the painting And that's what I'm trying to do now. There we go. Now there's textures in, in the rocks and in the foreground, what I'm painting right now, I'm gonna leave some openings in the rock. Uh, you don't have to paint it exactly, but, but as far as the overall drawing's concerned, you wanna always be aware of the perspective and, and the light the direction of the light and how, how it flows together. So, so I'm leaving a little bit of room for the, for the texture here. I'm going back into this as it's wet, looking for the darks. All right, huh, all right. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feel this and it looks like, it feels like, you can feel if, it, if it's wet, if it's a little bit tacky, but I think it's ready to go. And I want to, to paint uh, the back distance. And so for that, I'm gonna use a little smaller brush. And I wanna think about 
how is it that I can push this back? Because that's key. Because you want a, a far distant ground, which is shown there. You want a middle ground, and then you want the colors in the front to really pop. And you can see that, that I've kind of laid, laid the ground. But, uh, but now we'll put in some of the mid-tones. So I'm looking at that, at that scene, and I'm seeing kind of a variety of colors. And sometimes people ask me, how is it that, that I arrive at a certain color? And it's just uh, kind of intuitive after you do it a while. But I'm using brown matter and a little hooker green. Uh, hmm, and what else? what else? Maybe a little mineral violet uh, for the distance. And now, even though I see on the photo that it's a dark value, which means that, that it's a dark area, I'm going to want to push it back. And so here goes. This is Trinidad Head. How many of you out there have seen Trinidad Head? It's just one of those, those beautiful rocks that stick out in the Pacific. It's there with us all during the year, of course, and, and it, it takes on a different glow depending on the time of the day and the year. But I love Trinidad Head. I could, I could paint this without looking hardly uh, because I've done it so many times. And that's a good thing to do, by the way, to actually try to paint a paint a picture without looking and, and just see what you come up with. But I'm looking at that and I think I'm not quite happy with the, with the reddish tones. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a little cobalt blue and I'm going to darken that. But I don't want it too dark because I want to push it back. And if it does have a dark value, it means that the fog is really not, not that important on that given day, that it's not, the atmosphere is not getting in the way too much. So, hmm, let's see. And we'll take this round, this is a round brush, it's a smaller round, and everybody should have a round brush when you do watercolor painting. And it's still a, a relatively large brush. And I'm gonna go along here and here's that cliff line where the houses are and different things. And if I wanted to give the impression of some houses or something, I could leave a little white here and there. It should be fine. A little bit of a darker value there. I like the idea that maybe I'll put in some, yeah, some brown matter, it's called, to give it a little bit of that autumn tone. But it's a mass. I'm drawing a mass because in the far distance, you're not really seeing very much. And if you start to put in lines and detail in it, it just won't register. It won't make sense to the viewer. So I'm just keeping that really loose. But I'm, I'm kind of adding a little bit of variation in the color. I've often heard it said that, that in art, when you're doing landscape painting, they talk about variation, variation, variation. And what that means is, is that the, the value from light to dark should vary, and the line should vary. Everything should vary. Because in nature, there's a wonderful randomness. I love, love the randomness of nature. And if you start to, to paint uh, things in that, that give it kind of a human control, then, then you've missed a little bit of, of what's really out there in the landscape. Keep it random and keep it loose. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of water from this, and I'm going to run it right into the next part right here. Because I, as I was saying, I'm sculpting, and, and I want the, the painting to flow together. And so by, by not having hard edges between this area and the foliage that'll come later here, it's, it's sort of bringing the painting together. All right, so I'm gonna put in a little dark right here. This is called, the, I believe it's called the little head. And it's uh, 
a well-known feature of Trinidad. And I kind of went over a little bit too more, too much. I always think when I, when I paint the rocks of Trinidad that, it, that it's kind of like doing a portrait as I get to know the rocks. I, I like to give them respect in the sense that I want to be able to paint them the way they look. Uh, and so I hope that, that when people see my paintings, they can say, oh, that's the little head and, uh, and that's Trinidad head. All right. Well. I think I'm about ready to do the ocean now, so here we go. And it's, uh, over, it's kind of a cloudy, not ex it's bright, but it's a bit overcast, and, and that usually means that the, that the ocean will have a kind of a gray tone and pallor to it. So let's see here, I'm gonna mix burnt sienna and a little verditer blue, and I'm gonna come up with a gray. And if you want a beautiful color in your painting, make sure you, you put gray in because the gray will set off the color that you'll put in. So I'm seeing gray in the distance, and I wanna get that nice, beautiful horizon line, right like that. And I'm gonna run the horizon line right into the rock. Again, I'm thinking as I'm painting, that I want to run, I run, want to run all the different shapes together, all the different textures together, and the water and the landfall together. Now, a little bit about water, and this this is something that you know I know that water always finds its own level, so it it'll have a level aspect even though the the surf might, might be turbulent, it's still gonna have a kind of a level quality to it. So I'll put that in. And I'm thinking here about leaving little bits of light, specks of light. And let's see, coming down here to the edge of the surf. And this is our underpainting. So, so where I can, I'm gonna run the surf right into the rock because this is how we build continuity in the painting. I'm just going to run it right in there. If I didn't, it would, it would start to look cut out. And the value of this later on is going to be very dark, so I, so I can do that. There, I took a little, little bit of the darkness out of the little head and, and then gave it some light. Okay, this rock has some kind of texture spots in it right here, and I, I wanna leave some of this light because when I come back in on my third wash, it'll be a little more apparent. All right, so more kind of gray in the day. And I'll see how I feel on, on my second wash. I may wanna liven up the colors a little bit. And, and because of the value, that is the light and dark of the painting is still relatively light. I can go ahead and make it darker afterwards and also add maybe some more color. All right. <laughs> Here's where the, maybe the surf comes in. You see how I've, I've, I've run the pigment right from the ocean right into the rock. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch and put a little bit of kind of warm tone to the painting of the surf. It's one of those, those transitions in the water where it feels warmer here as you're moving closer up. But now here we have more, uh, the, the start of the ocean turbulence as it comes to the shore. And we can you can do a little drawing. You can draw with a brush. I'm thinking that I may want a little wave right there. And I'll come back through here. It's, it feels warm to me, the, the, the tone and the overall feel of the surf of, of this around here feels, feels warm. And again, I'm always thinking as I'm doing my watercolor painting that I want to protect my lights. 
I don't want to have to be scrubbing or messing around with the painting. And here I'm just going to run, run the ocean right into the rock. It's, it's really hard to get used to the idea that, that you do a drawing and then you go outside of the lines and you merge the lines. But, but when you're doing watercolor painting, it really is like sculpting. I've said that and I can't say it enough because that's what gives your painting that continuity that you want. Um, all right, let's see what else we can do. We'll put a little dark in here, maybe a little bit more. I can run that right into the rock and then it looks like we'll come back with a little more of that warm surf line. When you really look at the colors, that are out there in nature, it's really challenging for the artist to try to, to reach for those fine nuances of color, those colors that are kind of uh, merging of gray and other pigments. Uh, I think for me, the, these colors right here, these distant colors, to actually paint what I see is, is one of the challenges. And then sometimes when I, when I do the ocean, I think, you know, the surf might look chocolate colored, but I think, do I want to paint it that color or not? It's up to me, of course, but, but I like, like the challenge of being able to do it, being able to paint what is out there. All right, so now I think what I may do is get some cleaner water, and I'm going to do a little wet into wet technique. I'm going to wet the paper. It's, it is a little bit of a gray tone that I'm putting on because the water is a little bit, it's got some pigment in it. But I want to try to uh, use a smaller brush now and give a little bit of, of the impression of turbulence here. So I'm going to come in along here. And come in like so. Now, waves are kind of interesting. Uh, depending on your vantage point, that is, are you sitting higher or lower? But generally, the anatomy of a wave is such that it's got a breaking point, which we all know. And so I'm going to draw this in here a little bit. There we go. And they kind of swirl up and down. And here's where the, in, in the painting, the the wave will crash up against the rock. Now when you're doing this, as, as the water is hitting the, uh, the surf, the beach, um, it'll be level, but, but then it'll, it'll start to change its direction a little bit. So I'm going to be thinking about that. And then I want to create the impression that it is level, but it all, it, it's also changing. And here's some of the surf marks coming up towards the beach. And I can go back here if I want to create more drama to it. And we'll be doing that, but, but here's, the, here's the, the wave, the anatomy of the wave. Here it comes. And I can put a little more definition there. There we go. All right, there's the surf. Great, all right. Now here's, here it's gonna join and, um, and hit the sand beach, and let's see. What I'm doing as far as color is I'm just taking some of the water that's in the wells, it's the gray colors. It's the color that, that I've been mixing all along. So it'll come down through here. I'll put a little texture there. And here's another wave right here. And I'll give it a little bit more definition here. There we go. Put a little. Okay. All right. So before I get too carried away, you can see that I've uh, that I've spilled something there, and um, 
So that isn't that big of a deal. You can take what's called the flat brush, take a little bit of that out. And then I'll take a tissue and then wipe that so it's dry. All right, and now we're ready to hop right back into the, the beach in the sand color. So I'm back with my big quill. And what I'll use for the, for the sand color is I'll take some raw sienna, beautiful warm color, and I'll take cobalt blue with my quill brush, big quill brush. Then I'm gonna warm it up with a little bit of alizarin crimson. And I came way, way too much as far as the alizarin crimson, so I gotta come back and, and add more color to it. I got ahead of myself and I'll put cobalt blue in there and more cobalt blue. It's kind of, when you're mixing color, it just, you gotta be patient with it and, until you get it right. And now look at that beautiful soupy color that we have and put some color in and whoa, that is way too chocolatey. So maybe I'll, I hope I'll be able to pull this out. I don't know. Maybe one of these things where I may, may have messed up, but, but I, I also say that you can't mess up in watercolor. You just gotta keep going. There's that big quill brush of mine just going for it. Now, what I'm seeing uh, a bit is that as the, as the horizontal flow of the water is coming up on the paper here, it's, and on the beach, it's kind of going a little bit like this. It's going up a little bit, and I want to give the impression of that. And then there's this nice dark part of the surf right here that this is the darkest part right underneath. There we go. And you do have a little bit of time. They say that the life of a watercolor is when the, when the water is still part of the painting, what was, where, where the water is still active. And I want to put, while it is still active, I want to put a little bit of darkness under the waves, and I'll come back and move that around a little bit. All right. So there we go. Okay, then give the impression of the, of the ocean, the sweeping of the surf, but it's coming up. And the feel of this beach is it's, it's, it's tilting up a little bit, but it's mainly flat. And so I want to keep that impression. And this white right here, I don't need, it's going to be a little bit distracting, I think, for me. And maybe I'm getting some of those happy accidents that I've talked about with you. All right, so, so I'm going to come out more on the beach. And I'll move that right in there. And then this right here actually is going to be some brush, so I'm going to take that out. And I'll take a little a bit of that out, too. All right. Yeah. There's the, there's the surf line, the beach, the rocks have gone in, and now we're going to take a, another quill brush that's got a, a fine point, but, but gives us an opportunity to do some detail. I'm liking the way the background here looks because it's pushed back, but now I have to think about the middle ground of the painting, which means that as we paint down the paper, we want the, the darks to get darker. So lighter here, a little darker here, uh, darker yet here, and then really dark right here. And with that, with, with the perspective of the drawing, with the darks and lights and the color, that's where you get that depth in a painting. For instance, we wouldn't want to put yellow here. Yellow is always way, way in the foreground. Um, all right, so what we'll do is we'll take 
a little cobalt blue and burnt umber. It gives a really wonderful rich color of gray. And we'll look at the painting and, and you'll see it gradually start to come forward. When we ran the ocean into the rocks and everything, you'll see now that, that it doesn't matter because that's all part of the painting. And there. And I, as I'm painting this, I'm thinking that this is too dark because it's, it's mid-ground. That kind of dark should be there, but, but there we go. We'll put, yeah, it's coming down a little bit now. And we could put a little more water into our painting right here and lift, lift a little bit out. There, we can just work, on, work it and lift it out. So I, I think that's a little bit better. Now there's some really nice little impressions of the rock coming in here where the light comes into the rock. And I want to take that opportunity to, to preserve that light. It's still too dark on that one corner. So I'm going to take a little bit of that out. There. I'm going to come down here a little bit. There. Now here's where the rock meets, meets the surf. We said that water will, will always find its level. But in turbulence, it does kind of interesting things. It goes up and down. And you've seen waves. You know what I mean. And then, yeah, we'll come over to the next rock. Now, I'm not sure which rock is in front, but it doesn't really matter because we're painting it as a mass. There we go. And this is kind of, and we'll come over here and work on that a little bit later too. Now, I'd like to put a little bit of dark here too because this little head is kind of in front a little bit. And, and we'll think about some of the rocks in the distance here. And we can, with some of these rocks, we'll just put a little shadow underneath. Here, the turbulence of the surf. There's some other rocks, too, that I see. And this, by the way, is wet into dry because the paper's dry. If this paper was wet, it would be bleeding and, and moving all over the place. But we have control now over these shapes because the, the, the paper is dry. There's no water on it. And there's another one there. We're just moving around from rock to rock. <clears throat> oh, here's the fun one now. So I can see that the value here, the darkness, isn't quite where I want it. It needs to be a little darker, but that's OK. I can come back and put more detail on that later. I'm just going to go ahead and start on this rock. And this is. This is the one that is really the interesting one. It's got beautiful shapes. And here, we're, we're coming to the foreground. So let's make it dark. Yeah. Make it dark. And still, we, we've got a big brush here. And we'll come up. I'm just add, adding the darks as we're going through. I see the opportunity again for some kind of texture in the rock. So I'm going to leave some light areas, but I'm seeing a lot of dark in these part of the painting too. So, All right. I'm using a little raw sienna now. I want to give a little warmth to it. I'm coming up here wet into wet. And let's see. We 
have some light areas. And then there's some green at the top of this rock too, and I'm gonna try to blend that in too. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of hooker green, with a little bit of yellow, because it, it feels to me like the light's hitting the top of this rock. And here's a chance where we can put yellow into our painting because it is in the foreground. I wouldn't put yellow over here because it just wouldn't make sense. We'd say that that doesn't, it just wouldn't make sense. Yellow's kind of a foreground color. All right, then we'll go back to our cobalt blue and our burnt umber will give the rock a little bit more definition here. There. Well, let's see, do we wanna? There. We'll come down to the surf. And we'll leave a little, just some little markings there for where the, the light somehow finds its way into the rock. There. There, all right, here we go. Some of the rock formations. It's sort of a mass of, of shapes again coming in here. And I can take my tissue and create a little bit of texture here and there, and get back a little bit of light. I think I might want to do that there. There. All right. This is the part of the painting that I always look forward to. It's that opportunity for the rich foreground. Uh, so what I'm gonna try to do now, or will do, is I'm gonna put the background in right here, and then I'm not gonna really worry too much about the trees coming up. The trees will come up right here, but I can always lift paint out. So I'm gonna look at the, the color of what I want, and it looks more like I'm gonna go back to cobalt blue and some burnt umber. And I might just put a little green in there because it's moving towards the foreground. I think the green might be a little bit too rich. I wanna push, push it back a little bit. And so I'm gonna put the, the kind of the distant tree line right here that's up. up. And it's gonna come up right through the branches of the tree, and I'll put this tree in later, and then it comes down a little bit in through here. And there's kind of a, uh, some meeting of, of some different foliage here, and so I think what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of yellow ochre right here and blend that in. And behind that, maybe, or with that, I should say, there's some of the formation of the rock, and they're kind of a light, lighter tones. Now I'll get my other brush, which is my tissue, if I want to lighten some of that up as I'm thinking about it. And here is some of the distant rocks that are coming down that I see. I can put them in right here. And then there's that dry 
autumn grassland that is in the background right here. And that's yellow ochre mixed in with all that good soupy mixture that I have in my water wells right here. I'll mix that in. Yeah, and I'll put a little bit of more yellow ochre and bring it down like so. Coming down a little bit further. This is sort of a light value, which means that it's not very dark in the foreground. And it's still a little bit, I'm pushing it back. Now, the next part that I'm going to be working on is right here. And this is that, that sort of, it's still kind of mid-ground, isn't it? So I don't want to get it too dark. Because with darkness is the way that we create depth. Rich darkness, foreground, quiet darkness, midground, and then really light, more light darkness in the distance. And so the ro these rocks, though, have a little bit of texture and light to them. So I'm going to come back, and I'm going to just give the impression of light hitting this. And I can wash over this. Still not done. This is the second pass through. I'm just giving myself little opportunities to create the volume in the rock. Because as light hits things, and, and as you're able to express that light, that gives you that depth, and it also gives you the distance. So here. We'll put a little bit more. It's kind of moving towards a little bit, towards the viewer. We'll put a little bit more darkness in there. There. All right. Now let's think about this part right here. We'll, we'll let this dry right here. This is wet. If, if I started to put pigment on this, it would just explode across the, this, this area that's wet. So we'll work on this. This is now dry to the touch, so we're good right there. And this is really foreground now. This is really close up. So I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber, and I'm going to mix some cobalt blue. Seems like I'm saying that a lot. A lot of burnt umber and a lot of cobalt blue. And I'm going to come up here and give that the darkness. This is actually will be in shade. It's interesting as you're painting and you're painting the darks and the lights, it's always good to know why something is dark. And it usually has, has to do with the fact of, of where it is in terms of the distance from you, but also where the shadows fall on the subject that you're doing. And I'm putting a little bit of brown matter, which is a kind of a reddish sort of a paint. It's not red, but it's got a reddish tone to it. And I'll give a little reddish tone, because I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to put green. And a nice warm color with, with the green will make that pop. And green and red are also complementary colors. So, so that'll give it a little more interest and pop, too. So I'm back to cobalt blue and burnt umber. and if you know Luffenholz Beach, you'll recognize this rock. It's really, it stands out from wherever you are. And it's a beautiful rock. And it's got crevices. And, and as you get close up, whereas you don't see all the lines and the texture here, you will start to see these things here. And I, I also want to also think about the balance of the rock. Every rock has a kind of balance to it. And so I want to give that impression. If it, if it doesn't seem like it's balanced, then I haven't really done my job. I put a little bit too much darkness in there for what I want. There, let's, we want a little bit of balance there in that rock. Maybe that'll work. OK, 
Okay, this is getting dry here, so I want to mix in some hooker green. I'm using stronger pigments here. And this green, you can see it's kind of set off a little bit with that red. And I'm going to use a little bit of uh, what's called phthalo green, which is a really rich emerald green. You can see it if, you, if you're watching me mix it. It's really uh, very green. And I wouldn't want to use it by itself because it would just be, it would just scream out. Like, what is that color doing in there? But anyway, it gives the impression of nearness and gives it a little pizzazz too, I suppose. But I'm going to go back to hooker green because I don't want too much of that in the, in the painting. I want there, put some dark around it. And just that little bit of green and some of this yellow ochre gives, uh, the painting starts to come alive with color a little bit. And that, I'm feeling good about that because I want it to, to be colorful. Even on a gray day in the foreground, there's always going to be color. So we'll find it there. All right, so now I'm going to take this water and I'm going to trade it for some clear water because I want to get some nice, rich yellow ochre in there in the foreground. And here, we'll put it right up against it. Let it blend in. If you haven't done watercolors, this is where the, the fun is, is when you're seeing what the watercolor does, how it just beautifully mixes in. Look at the, these colors, the way that they've come in. I just love that about watercolors. And, hmm, what am I going to do? I think now I'll go back to a, a kind of a finer point brush, and I'm going to come up and create some grasses, maybe. You know, I'll just come up. Here and there, nice and wet. And let's see, maybe some more hooker green coming in here. And how about some mineral violet? We'll put some mineral violet in here and just see what happens. Well, we'll just let that set now. And then let's revisit some of these rocks here. This is the final pass on, the, on what we're doing here on that rock, and I just want to I, I don't want to put too much, I don't want to overly put a lot of detail into this, but I feel like I want a little bit more than is, is quite there. So I'm going to put a little more value. When I say value again, that means light and dark. I'm going to make it a little bit darker because the, this is a little bit too much like the distance, and I want this mid-ground to to be a little bit darker. I want the eye to be able to know that it's closer because it's darker and that there are some observable little bits of texture in there, right here. But every, every rock has areas where bits of light hit. So I'm seeing dark this over here. And this is what I do if, if I was out painting on location is I look for these opportunities to try to express the light. And that's what I'm doing. There. Coming through there. Good. 
Now I'll put a little bit more dark there. Somehow I, I picked up some green there without even wanting to, but that's okay. Whether it's green, it doesn't matter. It's the value that really matters for what I'm doing. It can be a green or it can be something else. All right, let me try to do something to this area right here. Remember how I left these areas out? To me, the, the eye focuses too much on that right there. So I'm going to take a little bit of gray tone, and I'm just going to wash over it. I'm going to mute it down just a bit. And then I might take my towel and dab it. I think that's better. All right, so I feel good now that this rock, these ro this rock formation, is darker, and so it it's come forward now. And now there's this rock in front, and I'll work on that a little bit and give it more, a little more pop to it. And the light is coming down here. Boy, that's really blue, but I'm not going to worry. Put a little bit of texture there. The overall impression of this rock is it's a mass and you want to paint things as a mass. And just be aware of light and dark. Now what I could do, I'm thinking, is that this is sort of a warm tone in here and where I left these little bits of light, I think I'm going to come back with some raw sienna. Raw sienna is a beautiful, again, autumn tone. And I'll put a little there. I'll take a little bit of the pigment off. There we go. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now this, again, is a little bit too light. If, if I'm looking at the painting, it should be more in the middle ground. So, so I want to put a little value. But, but I hope that you're seeing how with dark, darker darks in front and with more color, it's bringing the painting forward to us. Now, this, ha this will have some texture too because it isn't that far away. And I purposely left the surf light there because I'm going to, to lift some of this out at, right at the very end of the painting. That's what I'll be doing. And there's a little bit of texture to that. Now let's just tap here and see how we're doing. And here's that tree in the foreground. <clears throat> this is the part I really like to do too. And, and this is a, a Chinese calligra calligraphy brush. And you can buy these. They're, they're about maybe four or five dollars. And it's all scraggly and everything. But for what I'm doing, it'll just be perfect because I'm going to let the brush and all the scraggles do the work. And, and I'm mixing now indigo blue, which is a, a really dark blue. And I'm mixing some burnt umber. And I just want to get it kind of right because it's very dark. And here I'm up at the, up at the sky now with the tree. And, and the, you can see the bristles there. there they're all bristly and everything. They're not straight, but here we go. Just let it, let it paint it as a mass. It's dark. I want volume in the tree, so I want to let the light come through the tree. And it doesn't really matter that, that I'm painting every branch. I'm not trying to do that. I just want to give the impression of a tree, and it's, it's coming down to where it hits the land, and let's see. We'll give it a little bit more form. Come out a little bit. Trees are very rarely in nature are that they're they're uh, conical, like Christmas trees. They're they're usually. The trees are all windswept and they're tortured by the winds in the ocean. 
And so they're all kind of different shapes and, and they're kind of the result of all the things that they've been through, all the storms and whatnot. This is coming down. And some of their branches coming there. Let's put a little branch there. Well, it's lots of different trunks. I'll have it. All right. I think that that'll about do it for there. Now we're ready to zero in on the end of the painting, and, and now it's, a, it's an opportunity for me to look back and, and think about what I want to do to the painting. One of the things that I, that I want to do is to, is to take out some of the hard edges here, and I'm going to do that with a little flat brush in clear water, and I'm going to take away some of the, the detail here, and that just gives us that distance that we want in the painting. Gives us kind of a, a softer kind of feel to the edges here. Yeah, I like the way that that's looking. And then there's this big white area right here that doesn't really make sense too much. So I'm going to just soften that, take some of the, the, the hard edges out. And I might even go up here. You see how this is a solid line. We want variation in that line. And so I'm, I'm going to just take a little bit of the hardness out of that. And here, there's, I left a little bit of light to create something. I don't really know what it is, but it doesn't matter. The viewer can think of it as he or she will do. Here's the fun part. Now, I'm going to use this flat brush, and I'm going to give it a nice edge. And I'm going to take it into the rock, and I'm going to lift. We put pigment on, but we can also take pigment off. So I'm going to lift. And I think I'll get a clean tissue because I want this to be a kind of a light, light color. So I've got my tissue ready. I've got clear water, and I've got my flat brush. And I'm going to lift. And there's our impression of the surf coming in. When, when surf comes in, it creates atmosphere. Water kind of spills up and it gets in the way of the, of the rock. It, it, it creates the, the beautiful atmospheric effect of, of water. So I'm going to go around to the other rocks and I'm going to do the same. And I'm just lifting, taking the hard edges out. And I'll soften a little bit of this here. And I'm just kind of repeating this. I'm just taking some of those hard edges out. I'm lifting pigment, brushing up with my tissue, lifting. And around this time of year, this is when we start to see the big surf in Humboldt County, and I love painting this, the surf in the winter. It's just so beautiful. And if you can imagine being outside, you're just feeling the spray of the, of the water sometimes. 
and the wind at your face, the birds are flying. It's really meditative, and it's just a, a wonderful experience. All right, here's this big rock, and it's in the foreground. I'm just taking a little bit of water out, taking the pigment with the water, pulling it out, taking some more. There we go. We'll come in a little bit more here. There. Take some of the value, the, the, the darkness out. So I, so I left some, some areas right here, some light, but it's pretty distracting to me now. So I can just kind of wash over that a little bit now. And I'll take my flat brush, I've got it in my hand, and I think I'll take a little brown matter and some verditer blue. And I'll come in here and soften some of that. We want the painting to read as a whole. And we don't want things to kind of stand out and distract us. Now we can come back in here with a little bit of different color of sand, lighter color. So I'm going to take quinacrium gold and a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm going to try to create kind of a gray, grayish tone, but with a little warmth to it. And I want it to, be, to read a little bit lighter than this. Anyway, we could work and work on this. And, and one of the challenges, that, one of the great challenges of, as a painter is to know when to quit. How many times have I said, if I could just maybe fix this one thing, I'll be done? And then I try to fix it, and I ruin the painting. Well, let's see. In all these brushes, I've probably got a skinny, tiny little one. And one of the things I like to do is I like to put birds up in the atmosphere. And I like to do that because it gives that beautiful open sky some volume. And so they, they don't have to be much of anything. But they do need to be a little bit darker than that. You all probably have made put birds in the sky when you're going through school. And that's all I'm doing. You could do this. Uh, like that. <clears throat> well, I'll probably take that home, and I'll look at it, and I'll, I'll look at it for, for color harmony. Are the colors spread around? Is there balance to the color? Then I'll look at the value. Do the lights and darks make sense? Do I have depth and distance from, from the color and the lights and darks. And then I'll probably do, do some more to it. But I think for tonight, I'm pretty well done. And I'd just like to share with you that I host a Sunday paint out every Sunday in Humboldt County. And if you'd like to join me, just look on Facebook under Paul Ricard. And I post on Saturday where We'll meet on Sunday. So, so if you'd like to join Sunday Paint Out, you can friend me on Facebook, and you too can come out and enjoy the wonders of watercolors. Thank you for joining us tonight.